America, how we doing? Uh, happy Monday. Uh, this, I, this video should come out on a Monday. Uh, it's been a cold weekend. Uh, today is Saturday and it's actually pretty chilly out here. Uh, or no, it's Friday. Today's Friday. I'm losing my days here. And it's actually pretty chilly here in Texas. Uh, a little front came through. It's like 46 degrees right now and, and drizzly and overcast. So I got my coat on. <laughs> and only got one door open so the breeze doesn't blow through here real fast. Uh, all right, where did I leave you guys at uh, Friday? Oh, floor plans, floor plans. Let me, uh, I'll get to that in just a second. Let me catch you up on, I've got the, the solar completely done, almost. <laughs> uh, still coming up with ideas for the tilt. Uh, this is what I did. I went down to, uh, I think I went to Lowe's and got this. This uh, aluminum bar, it's eight foot long. I cut it into shorter pieces. Uh, two foot pieces and uh, it's about that thick and about that wide one inch by maybe quarter or three sixteenths thick okay anyway I got two bar two bars of this which eight foot each cut each one of them into fourths so I've got 16 bars no one two three four five six seven I got eight bars I'm sorry I got eight bars and um, they're sitting right here I got all of them cut up all right and this was going to be the tilt arm you know when i tilt it up this would be the support arm for tilting okay still will be okay uh my idea for mounting all this stuff kind of shot craps because i also bought some of this uh aluminum much thinner i don't know it's like 1 16th or something it's real real thin and inch and a quarter something like that and the reason i bought that is to cut into shorter pieces like this and then bend it like this. Let me go upstairs and explain how all this was going to go together. All right, let me grab all this stuff. And we'll go upstairs and I'll talk you through it. All right. Okay, we're back. Um, now, the idea was, un, you know, bolt, uh, this would be unbolted. You take this bolt out, you tilt this up, and then you put that support bar in there. And that would hold it at about the angle that I that you last saw it at. Okay, drill a hole in here, hole in here, and mount that all up. Well, that works fine, but there's bolts in here, and I'd have to take these stupid bolts out every time with a ratchet and socket and all this, and it's just a headache. I wanted some a quick release system, so I bent this up. And the idea now this was for that side. That's why I was trying to aim you that way, but the light's no good. So it's got a little bit of an angle bent because of the angle of the roof and the flatness here. But that's the idea. It go right in there, it clip over the top, and when, you, when you're ready, you just push, when you want to deploy or tilt them, you just push this and it's spring loaded like that. You lift the solar up, the panel up. And this would just sit there. And then you put your bar in somehow. All right. Problem is this is aluminum and aluminum doesn't it doesn't have a spring to it. it. It does, but it doesn't. Now, I bought aluminum thinking, you know, no corrosion kind of thing, you know, aluminum on aluminum. And it, it doesn't have a lot of springiness. In it. Now, it looks like it does. See, it bends quite a bit. But the problem is if you bend it too close, the amount of lift that I needed to hold this panel down, for me to push that all the way over, it ends up bending and it doesn't spring back, okay? So, that, chunked it. Got a different, got a different idea. Um, and I did it on this one over here on the other side of, of this panel. I put a hole right in here and I put this in here with a bolt. And as you can see, put that bolt in there. And that goes into the hole and holds the panel in. When, I, when I'm ready to deploy, I can, it's a much longer spring now, say, longer piece of metal. When I get ready to deploy, I just pull this out. It pulls it out of that hole and then I can lift up. Then I can put one of these bars in there. Ah. Try to find an easy system, lift up, be done, and not have to get tools out, okay? Not have to get wrenches and sockets and all that kind of thing every time you want to deploy these. So, problem with this, as you can see, if you look, see it has that bend right here. It has that bend in it. Well, the length of the bolt that I needed to get through this bracket into this to hold that all down needed to be about an inch and a quarter bolt. And when it's in there, that's fine. But the first time I pulled it out, I got to pull it out so far that it put a kink in here. Aluminum doesn't work. 
I might try this same system, but with steel instead. Because steel, the same size and everything, but made out of steel. Because steel would, has a better memory, okay? And we'll hold that, it won't bend so easy. All right, so. Uh, then I come up with, uh, oh, I was last night, one of the viewers made, commented, uh, a bolt, like a sliding bolt, like on a gate or something. And uh, so I got on Amazon, got to looking around, and I found this, this little bolt here. All right, and the idea is, and I can't find the right size. I keep looking. This is something that, this is a work in progress. But the idea is take that little bolt. Let's just say this is it, okay? This is that sliding bolt gizmo. Instead of putting it out here on the outside, put it underneath on the inside, all right? Put it on the inside. So when I want to deploy, all I got to do is come up here, reach under here, unbolt, you know, slide the bolt, and it loosens it up, and I can lift it up. These can be permanently mounted in here and then have a clip. So when I lift them up, they go up, it goes up like this, and then I can put the bolt in. Very few bolts that way. So that might be my solution, all right? So, anyway, that's what I'm looking at, okay? Uh, enough of the solar. I'm done talking about solar. I got frustrated last yesterday uh, doing this, everything I worked on. Um, didn't work, <laughs> all these ideas I had. And I finally just threw my hands up and said, hell with it. I got mad and went home. Um, uh, I don't show that stuff on camera. I, don't, I, I get frustrated like anybody else. So anyway, uh, I went ahead and just put bolts in there. They're solid, permanently mounted right now, solid. And um, hopefully I won't have to tilt them. Hopefully I have enough for all the electricity I'm gonna use in this. Hopefully I won't have to tilt them. But it is there in case I, need to okay the, the hinges on that side in case I do need to tilt all right with that where are we at let's go downstairs and let me show you I got some new toys Okay, what we got here? We got toys. Uh, we got, it says glass. Hmm, glass, and this is real light. So what do you suppose that is? I'll set you down right there and let's open them up. One at a time. It's a 75 gallon tank. I got two of them, 150 gallons. Uh, damn, Stan, that's a lot of water. Exactly. Uh, that's the biggest limiting factor in dry camping, boondocking and everything, is you worry about your water. How much water do I have? Do I have enough? Or we're getting really low on water. Now we gotta stop what we're doing, run into town and get some damn water and go to the black tank and tank, you know, empty the black tank and all that kind of stuff. So, eliminating though, the gray and the black tank have all this fresh water, so I have plenty of water. I can go out and camp someplace, spend a whole month, and take showers when I want to, and not have to worry, oh, can I take a shower today? Can I afford to take a shower today for all the more water I have? So, Stan, that's awful expensive, awful heavy, a lot of weight. Well, what's it come up to? Uh, water's roughly eight, eight pounds a gallon, 150 gallons. You're looking around 1,200 pounds. 1,200 pounds, okay, I started doing the math. Somebody mentioned that uh, on Friday's video when I was showing the floor plan, how everything, you know, all the heavy stuff's back on the axle. Well, yeah, you're right. You don't want to overload the back end of the trailer, 
but this is going to be right over the top of the axis, okay? And the bed is going to be right over the top of the axis, and the couch or the chair, you know, recliner, all, that's going to be right on top of the couch. If you put stuff too far forward, then your tongue weight's too heavy, and then you got all that tongue weight putting down, and that's dangerous too. You got to get the balance right. So um, it might look like there's a lot of weight going into the back, but there's going to be weight in the front too. And this trailer is rated for 7,800 pounds. The Raptor is rated for 8,000 pounds of towing, and I don't know what the tongue weight is, but it's a few hundred pounds for the for the uh, tongue weight for the the, the hitch. So I don't want to overload the front and then the hit, hit, it's too heavy on the hitch and you know, you have problems that way too. And, uh, anyway, and who's to say, I don't have to fill these all the way up. You know, and if we're just, if I just want to do a lot of driving, these won't be full. You know, let's say for instance, leave Dallas and they're head all the way out to Arizona. That trip out to Arizona is going to be fairly empty. You have just a little bit of water in them. Get to Arizona, top off and then drive 30 miles out into the, uh, out in the wilderness, out in the boonies someplace. So it's not like I'm going to drive from coast to coast full of water. So anyway, there's that. All right, I got two of these and I got the different fittings and everything. I bought these off of Amazon, took about, I think I ordered them on Monday and it came out on Friday, so, uh, or Thursday I mean, so uh, last night. So about four days to get them, wasn't too bad. So anyway, there's those four, or these, these uh, water tanks. All right, we'll set these over here for now. Let's get the other box. Now, what do you suppose I got in this box? that's uh, glass. Hmm. Well, people were mentioning, and I already knew this, I mean, what? I, don't, don't take this the wrong way, but so many of these comments you guys make, I've already got it figured out and thought about already. Oh, Stan, you don't, you're not gonna put any windows in there? <laughs> yes, I'm gonna put windows in this. All right, and here they are. There's supposed to be five windows in here. Five windows in this little bitty box. These are what they call shed windows. Okay, they, uh, they go like on a, a tool shed in the backyard where you store your lawnmower and uh, that kind of thing. And they're really good reviews on this. They're small. Oh, I only need to take one of these boogers out. Man, they, they pack this thing well. Take the heck out of them. All the styrofoam packing everywhere. So that's one of the things on the reviews. This 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 uh, this company had really good reviews as far as their. Uh, their yeah, go ahead and take it out of the box. I'm making a mess. I'm gonna have to clean it up afterwards. Come here. All right. They did. They packed this thing really, really well. All right. There it is. Little bitty windows. You got the clips down. Clips down at the bottom. Ha ha. Screened. All right. They look small. Yeah, they're 14 by 21. The opening is. Uh, tip measure. Where's the measure? Tip measure. Here we go. They are exactly 14 to the inside here, not the, not the flange, but the inside opening is 14 inches by 21, exactly as advertised. So 14 by 21, uh, I think this goes up another, yeah, goes all the way up. So they completely open up, they got a screen on them, they got the flange around, you put your butyl tape or your uh, caulking or whatever around this and screw these in. and. Uh, it's only one, it's kind of small, but I'll put like three of them side by side and make a nice, good sized window over the kitchen sink. So, those are the, that's my toys, my new toys I got. And, uh, trying to think what else we're going to talk about today. Oh, I got to tell you the floor plan. Okay, I'll set this stuff aside for now. Let's go talk floor plan. Okay, up into the trailer. Alright, I decided to go with the motorcycle garage. Alright. So, what I've done here so far is I put two by two walls in here on the back. Um, let's see, let's get back here. Okay, I've got two by two walls on the four foot section over here where the solar is. This is on the, the driver's side rear door. And here's the very back, back section where the solar is. All right, I got a two, two by two wall and I'll put a two inch insulation in here. And I know these are one and a half by one and a half. 
and I've got two inch insulation. All right, well, I'll put my plywood or whatever on the inside of this and I'll cut this out, put insulation in here, the two inch insulation. And when I put the screws in there, I just won't torque them all the way down. So there'll be like a half inch air gap in right where the stud is, okay? All right, <clears throat> so there'll be two inches of insulation here, and then plywood on the outside, plywood or some, probably that, uh, that uh, paneling on the inside. Okay, the bed will go right over here, all right? The bike will pull in right here, and I can store other things in here. Now, you talked about the air conditioner. I have, I knew about the mini splits. People talked, oh, bad lighting, I'm sorry. Um, I knew about the mini splits and everything, and I really thought about doing a mini split, but uh, I don't think I'm gonna use the air conditioner near as much as, uh, you know, because the idea of this thing is go where it's cool. Don't go where it's 100 degrees. I don't need air conditioning, you know. But those days when it is a little hot, not very often, but I, I need to free, reframe this because I didn't have the refrigerator or the air conditioner. I keep saying refrigerator. The air conditioner, I didn't have the air conditioner. Uh, I've got it now. It's sitting right outside. It's a frigid air. It's a little bitty one. If you want to know which one it is, uh, go back on uh, Hobotech's uh, videos. He did uh, a review on his uh, running it off that little thousand watt generator. And uh, yeah, I don't know if his is the frigid air. His was a five five thousand BTU. Uh, this mine is a six thousand BTU, slightly larger, but it's all mechanical controls. There's no electronics, and it's just you know tw twist knobs. Super, 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 super simple. But I need to reframe this and make a hole here for that air conditioner. All right. Uh, this is two by four. I put two by fours here, two by twos here. Reason being, I knew that air conditioner was going to go in here, and I knew a motorcycle was going to go in here. I wanted a nice, strong, sturdy wall in case the bike shifted. I got a good, strong wall here to help maybe stop it. I mean, it's not a... Oh, the shadow is just wrong. I'm sorry. I don't know. This is not a studio. <laughs> you have to bear with the little bit of lighting I have in here. A little work light down there on the ground. So anyway, um, the air conditioner will go here. Two by four walls. Good supported. So I can put that air conditioner in here, make it a little bracket. Condensation, the drain. It'll drip, drip, drip. Now I'll run a tube and I'll drill a hole and drip it out onto the ground outside. All right. Uh, and then the heat in here, I'll just open the door like normal. I looked into the mini split and I might go with that. I don't know. The best place for me to put this air conditioner would be up on the front wall up here. And the problem with that this would be a great place to put it. Put it up nice high and then put the TV right below it or something. And then put the, the shower tub right below that um, with a lid on the top of it. And uh, that would be an excellent idea. My problem with it is out here, an air conditioner. A window air conditioner on the front of this thing, when I'm driving down the highway, I think it'll be more of a problem with water when it rains or something, water leaking in. Um, if anybody has, can find a good video for me showing me how to install an air conditioner on the front wall of a cargo trailer like that. I've looked and I haven't seen, I, there's some, but not detailed, like uh, explaining how it all works because that's very, it's all open. There's grates, grates all over the thing for the water to go in, okay? And I know you put maybe a vinyl cover we to put a vinyl cover on, but if it's pouring down rain, hitting up here and then running down, somehow it's going to get in and then get inside the living room area. I just, I thought for all the more I plan on using the air conditioner, that would probably be the better thing. Just putting it in, sorry, putting it inside. Okay. And actually there's the air, it's the frigid air. Uh, well, I'll show you on the, uh, on the uh, website, but it's a frigid air air conditioner, uh, 250 bucks. All right. The cheapest mini split I could find, was about 650 okay and that wouldn't be bad you put the mini split here and run it on the inside and put it on the inside wall that is a very viable option now if i can't figure this out how i want to put this in here i might return that and go get that mini split that we that uh that i'm talking about and that mini split would work perfect on the outside run it up run the hose up here put the mini split right above it right on the top and put the, to the TV right below it. That would actually probably be the best solution. But uh, like I said, for all the more I'm gonna use the air conditioner, I think this internal one will work fine. So I'm still thinking on that, still pondering on that. All right, this, long, this video is went long enough. You've learned all kinds of stuff. 
And uh, tomorrow, or Wednesday, I should say, Wednesday, I will show you that thing. <laughs> Shh. I'll tell you. I'll tell you on Wednesday. <laughs>